Hello, today we're going to be talking about one of the most ancient plants in cultivation, believed to have become part of the Eastern Mediterranean diet around the year 6000 BC and also eaten by the ancient Greeks, the Romans and also the Vikings. Bearing this rich history in mind, we are talking about broad beans. Broad beans are also known as faba beans, fava beans, horse beans and field beans among other names. Some varieties are for human consumption and some are for animal consumption. They have many potential health benefits. One of these is they contain L-DOPA which may offer help to those who are suffering from Parkinson's disease. They are high in manganese which is good for bone health high in fibre, high in antioxidants which can help to boost the immune system and they also may offer help for those with high blood pressure. One thing I like about broad beans is they're generally ready around mid-June time, even earlier if you don't wait for the resulting beans and you just eat the pods and this can be very handy because at this time of year there's generally not too much fresh produce available from the garden or the allotment. With regards to direct sowing broad beans into the ground, there are generally two times to do this. One is in the autumn, so this would occur around late October. The other is in the spring, and this would be around late March. The best temperature to germinate broad bean seeds is between about 7 to 15 degrees C, which is about 45 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. I have read, however, that broad beans can germinate in temperatures as low as 2 degrees C, which is about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the case of these, for example, I'm going to be growing them out here in the polytunnel. And although we are getting some nice warmer temperatures over the next few weeks here in the polytunnel during the day, it will drop down a bit at night. So don't worry too much. As long as you're roughly around the 7 to 15 degrees C, around the time you're germinating them, they should be fine with that. The first variety I'm going to be sowing today is the Sutton. So these get about 18 inches tall, which is about 45 centimetres. So they're a dwarf variety. So they're good for exposed locations, maybe at your allotment, it gets very blowy there, something like that. And also they are suitable to be grown in containers as well. Today I'm going to be planting the broad bean seeds into these trays of multi-purpose compost like this. Now they should germinate within about 7 to 10 days hopefully and then what I can do around late March is plant them out into the open ground. They're probably going to go down the allotment and around that same time I'm also going to be direct sowing some into the ground. So all being well I'll have a successional period of broad beans cropping. So the trays are now filled with multi-purpose compost. I've pushed it down nice and firm so that the seeds have got a nice base to germinate from. So what I like to do is put them in about one inch, which is about two and a half centimetres. Now I like to put them in eye up. I have been told by other gardeners it doesn't matter which way you put them in, but uh, call me traditional if you wish. I generally like to put mine in eye facing upwards. I now have my seeds in and I'm going to put my multi-purpose compost over the top of them. Don't forget your tag so you know what you're growing, what they are and also the variety. The next variety I'm going to be growing is Express. So apparently these are the fastest broad bean, extremely quick to harvest from a spring sowing. So there we are. Same procedure again with the Express. Once again, don't forget your tag. Going to water them now. I'm going to use this watering can. Now I shouldn't have to worry too much about damping off with broad beans. That's a fungal condition caused by low light levels and cold conditions. But I've not found in my experience broad beans suffering from that too much. But if that is a concern, what you could consider doing is other than watering them with a watering can, use a spray gun such as this. You, know, you could always do it like that if you wanted. And then when they've germinated, water them from underneath by seeing them on a tray. Broad beans like a rich, well-draining, fertile growing medium, pH of about 6 to 7.5. Now, broad beans don't like poor draining soil. Now, 
This can be an issue if you are planning on planting them in the autumn because the temperatures can be lower and of course rainfall can be higher and the seeds can simply rot off in the ground. So what you can do is you can wait until late winter such as now or earlier in the spring before you do your sowing. So you could sow them in pots like I am now in readiness for a late March planting out or indeed wait until late March and then direct planting the ground when the ground is hopefully a little bit drier. When planting your broad beans, either direct sowing the seeds into the ground or whether you're transplanting pot grown plants, you want to plant them in an area of full sun. Now partial shade will do, but full sun is far better because broad beans are generally growing during some of the cooler times of the year where the daylight is still relatively short. So what you want to make sure you're doing is give them as much chance as possible by giving them full sun. These are some broad beans that I planted last year. I think I sowed them around November time. So the Sutton here, this is the dwarf one. Aquadulsa claudia here. Now Aquadulsa claudia is generally the one that's recommended if you're going to be overwintering them because it's a very hardy plant and they've actually grown the most as I would have expected them to. And this one here, Express, they've not grown so much but you can still see there are seeds there. So we'll see how these do and I'll probably plant these out into the ground at the allotment the same time I plant out the plants I've sowed today and the ones I will direct sow probably around the same time at the allotment. Now regarding how many seeds to sow, look on the back of your seed pack and it'll tell you how far apart these spacings are. For example, what you want to do is sow enough seeds to occupy that space, work it out and grow a few more in, just in case you end up losing some. I find this particularly important if you're direct sowing into the ground because you could lose a few more that way. So what you want to do is have some spare just in case you need some extra ones so you're not disappointed. So what is my preferred method of growing broad beans? Well I do like to direct sow some into the ground around late October time. That way they can germinate, make the most of the still warm enough weather and what they will do is get to about this height and then when the days get shorter, so lower light levels and the temperature drops, they will stop growing above the ground. But the roots underneath will still be establishing and that way when the temperatures increase in the spring, the plant's already established so it can really spring into growth and that way you can get a really nice bit of vigorous growth going. And then what I also like to do is direct sow, sow some around late March and also plant some ready established plants in around the same time. That way you can get a successional cropping of broad beans. So yes, it's certainly one of my favourite things to grow. Now hopefully when these have germinated, made a nice size, we can all go down the allotment together and plant them out. So if you'd like to see that, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell. I would appreciate that and you can also share my work if you want and you can also like it as well. So there we are. See you next time peeps. Any comments, questions, whatever, please feel free to post them below. Thank you for viewing.